What's going on everybody? It's Mike here and today we're going to be working on project Chuck and we're going to be installing some C notches in the back frame. Now this is a project that my son and I have been working on and we're actually getting kind of far now that the far along should I say that the weather has cooled off. We got a ton of parts here. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, classic performance rear suspension parts that we bought. I'll post a, a little picture of what the kit is and the part number and whatnot. And we got a positive rear end. We actually tore apart this old uh, this old uh, rear end here, and there was so much water in it, it was disgusting. But we're gonna be able to salvage the old axles. But nonetheless, let's go take a look at the C notches and what we're dealing here. Uh, we are cleaning this frame up, as you can see. We are just wire wheeling it and seeing what we're dealing with. We get to the back section here, and we are getting in some nasty stuff. So we're thinking about. Obviously, we're going to try to see if we can replace these if they make an aftermarket. I'm sure that they do. But first, before we can start painting and getting all this frame ready for new suspension, today, you guessed it, we're going to be installing these C-notches. Now, this was a C20 frame. Uh, we made it a C10 short box. We cut the section out right in the center, did a uh, Brothers uh, frame shortening kit, made it a short box. Now... We're going to put the C-notches in so we can get it to ride low because this thing is going to be bagged. Uh, for all the people that are new to this project, I'm going to save you a lot of time. If you want to go watch the videos, I appreciate it. If you want to subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. But I'll just put a little video on the back from the day I bought the truck from us breaking it down to getting it to this condition right now that you see. So I hope you guys enjoy. Now the first step in this whole process is, well, we got to get these old brackets off here and then... On just on this pasture side, we have to cut this lip that comes out of concurves. We have to get that, cut that down at an angle so we don't get into our frame here. Remove it so we can slide our piece on and get our measurements because what we're going to need to do is there's two rivets down here that we need to uh, use a reference off of and we have to be able to slide this piece on here to see exactly where we got to make our cuts and measure it out. So what I'll do is I'll scrub a line from that when I put the piece of work on there We'll uh, figure out where those holes line up and where it coincides with this. But first, like I said, we got to angle grinder this off and then we got to get these uh, off and they're not going to be real fun because they're riveted. In. Rolling up through the black Cadillac High heel boots and a sexy body full of tats Baby's bad, oh baby's had a bad After her there ain't no coming back Wanna take a run or die I think she's feeling me, turn it up a few degrees My imagination of her body gets the best of me Oh God, she's such a tease Big lips, bruised knees I'm addicted to her, need her touching me Cause she got a bad little waist And we're tearing down this place After looking at me, Chase Casamigo to the face, baby, I don't need no space Coming closer for a taste And I'll show you how I make everything just fade away Cause she's like, say, strokes, cocaine, rice, so insane Jealous of a glory that she wears up on that tight frame All game, no shame, baby, can't get a play I feel like an addict cause she's sex, drugs, cocaine I have to, I'm gonna have to work out this little guy right here. There we go. Look at that. That is a lot. I mean, I pretty much cut that rivet right in half. And I am just covered, covered in rust. Uh, but it's to be expected. The next day. Well, it's a different day. And uh, needless to say, first day, Kick my butt because my air hammer it uh took a took crap on me so <sighs> boy and i we went to man's favorite store went to harbor freight because we don't use that air hammer hammer too much but when we do we need it and the one we got was garbage so uh we picked up a few things one being a new air hammer but let's look at where i got we got her cut out and like i said when i cut that piece of metal out well she sagged a little bit so we got a block supporting it up barely putting pressure right here but it'll it, it it's back to where it wanted to be 
The problem I had is the rust swelled all this out. So I had to take that air hammer about the time it took a, a poop on me. I air hammered all this out, smashed that piece of metal out. What it looked like before was that. Moisture got in there, rusted out, swelled it all up. Those rivets are being a pain. <sighs> I'd have to say the most time consuming part of doing this is those dang rivets. They are, they are just a bear and I have to drill some of them out because they just won't come out whatsoever. So, well, we're gonna have to drill the rest of them out and go from there. I did wind up taking a Sawzall and I did my major cuts with the grinding wheel or the cutoff wheel, but get those sharp angles there. I had to use the Sawzall because there's like multiple pieces of metal frame that you're going through here and they're kind of a pain. You can see I messed that up a little bit but we're gonna wind up welding this in anyway. Yep, we graduated to Big Chief there. And she works pretty good. I already gave her a couple test lugga luggas and uh, works pretty good. Threw this old one in the trash already, but here it is. Yeah, that's like a $13 air hammer and not getting the job done. And the boy got himself a new seat that he's putting together. So he's gonna be able to scoot around to this project and get her, get her done. Cause we only got one stool in here, huh? Mm -hmm. Now we got two. Cleaning this up, getting it out of there so uh, the metal's not swollen. Yeah, that's a must because it, it pushes that bracket down and then you're not flush back there. So we gotta get this all to fit up tight. We'll bolt on the bottom part here first. We'll smash these uh, two pieces of metal. We'll squeeze it all together so we'll have a true um, line as it gets back to here before we drill this or drill any of these so bolt these two up first figure out where you're at and then use the markers to drill your new holes try this one sorry if you hear chickens we kind of kind of do live on a farm i'm wondering if these three quarter ton frames are thicker in the back because these bolts not want to get in there. Well, we're going to see if we can smash these two pieces of metal together. That's all we got. Painted this all up, painted the back side of this, because when you mate them two together, you don't want no bare metal back there. So we uh, made sure we painted it up before we went through all that. Yeah, still raw on that side, so. All right. Right now, we're gonna give her the Ugga Uggas. Tighten her up. Actually, to check this before where your spring goes down in the bottom down here where you put your your little spring cup that wasn't exactly lined up perfectly we're good now So we got it kind of in place right now. And the trouble you want to run into before you drill these two holes right here is we got to get this one on the bottom here drilled up. We got to take care of this gap because this will bring it up probably about an eighth of an inch. If you drill these holes right there before you did that, when you tighten this up, this would be off. Now, you can tell right here we don't have too much a gap, so we don't have to pull it in too much. We might, we might just get the C-clamp and just pull it in a little bit as we drill this hole. Also, I, uh, I ditched the battery operated drill because she, she, she didn't have enough ass for this job and the battery is going dead. So we went to the good old plug-in. You can always trust 
the plug-in drill. The only thing I don't like about using these bad boys is when they catch, they catch hard. So you gotta be prepared. Alright, now that you got this side done, I'm not going to pain you with watching the other side. There's no need to make the video that long. But, we'll finish up the other side. Next episode, what we'll be doing is we'll be taking that cross member out. Uh, we'll be finishing up the welds on where I cut the frame in half and shortened it and then we'll be welding this all back in on both sides. We'll uh, wire wheel the whole frame in that episode and wipe her down with lacquer thinner and then we'll get down to painting. We're going to be using a POR 15. That stuff dries hard as nails. I really love it. I've used it on another restoration project. One thing I love about it is the fact that uh, it self levels. You can spray if you want to, but I just use cheap paint brushes and it gets in all the crevices and leaves a real smooth finish, but none of, none of that. That time will come. I'll explain it all later. I appreciate you guys watching and I hope I see you in the next episode. And uh, be sure to check out the videos of the past uh, uh, breakdown and uh, what we've done so far in this project. It's real interesting. My son and I are doing it and I know you guys will enjoy those videos. If not, uh, I'll save you trouble and We'll just uh, post a little five minute clip of when I took this home and we busted it apart. See you next episode.